Hello. In this uh, video lesson, I will then discuss the classification of, uh, of policy instruments, uh, focusing, of course, particularly on environmental policy. So according to the textbook by Berman et al., uh, policy instruments can be classified into three groups. So there are so-called institutional approaches, and there are command and control instruments, and uh, the our favorite in economics, so-called market-based instruments. So I will walk you through all three, three approaches uh, mentioned here. So firstly, what are these kind of instru instru institutional approaches? So we can think of those as this kind of soft uh, policy interventions. Uh, and here are three examples. So, so as you remember this uh, cost theorem, of course, this kind of private bargaining can, can, uh, can uh, already private bargaining between the polluter and the affected par parties can, can um, help to uh, result as an efficient outcome. But then if there is many, many, uh, many parties that, uh, that uh, suffer from the damage, then, uh, then, then bargaining can be difficult to achieve. So there can be ways to then facilitate the bargaining better. So for example, polluter information placed in the public domain or even like uh, like just uh, just having some kind of uh, uh, pu public data of, of how much, uh, for example, different firms are polluting can be already helpful. Then also related to the to the cost theorem, uh, legally specifying the liability that who gets to who who is responsible for the damages, uh, that can also already help to help to them uh, avoid this kind of kind of damages. And then, of course, uh, there can be information-related uh, or educational tasks. So, for example, if if uh, then uh, um, media campaigns or or education about uh, promoting uh, social responsibility can can be can be helpful. But uh, none of these these are kind of uh, kind of uh, make placing any explicit restrictions on the, for example, on the on the quantity of pollution. They are more kind of relying on the on the education, information, and and public pressure, perhaps. So then, perhaps the the favorite favorite type of instruments for the policymakers tend to be this kind of uh, command and control instruments, and uh, these command and control measures they can be classified depending on which part of the production process they try to try to influence. So here is the figure 7a from permanent out textbook. Uh, and on the left part of the figure labeled A, there is uh, it, it kind of tries to um, illustrate the, the different stages of production. Starting from the bottom, bottom of the picture, you can see that there is inputs used. Then there is uh, production technology, which which then results as some kind of quantity of uh, goods produced. So think about some kind of uh, factory where there is inputs going in, uh, and then within the factory there is some kind of production taking place, and then uh, as the finally there is some kind of uh, output of of uh, of goods. There's also some kind of side effects, which is emissions, and then then uh, these emissions then then. Uh, uh, can spread in the environment in, in different ways to the water systems, to the air, uh, locally or to, to, the, to, the, to the atmosphere. And then there, as a result, there are some kind of uh, ambient pollution levels. So on the right hand side of the, of the figure, then there is like, uh, like uh, different types of uh, command and control measures that the government or government organization can place. So starting again from the bottom part of the of the figure, uh, there can be some kind of input restrictions. So, for example, what kind of um, uh, what kind of chemicals are allowed to be used as as inputs? Then there can be technology controls. So specifications that what kind of uh, production technologies are acceptable, and there can be ban of certain types of technologies. Uh, then there can be output quotas that how much of, of this kind of um, 
Um, it, this, this refers to the to the to the good output that how much it is allowed to produce certain certain commodity. Uh, then there can be emissions licenses or emissions permits. And then zoning refers to this kind of location of emissions. So, for example, uh, one is not allowed to build a nuclear power plant in the very close to some kind of uh, uh, large urban population in case of some, some accident, for example. Similarly, you cannot have some kind of, um, kind of power plant that is burning fossil fuels very close to the, to the uh, close to some urban area, so you would, would have them somewhere somewhere further away from the from the residents. And then, of course, you can have also some kind of limits or requirements for the amb ambient pollution levels. So, so this all illustrates at which stage of the production process or this kind of uh, uh, emissions, then, then there can be different types of, uh, of command and control. Or, or, or some kind of restrictions or controls or regulations. And this is, in some sense, uh, uh, it seems to me that, that, that typically politicians, when they are asked to, to interfere with, the, with the, some kind of uh, pollution, pollutant, uh, then uh, this is the immediate uh, reaction that they will make some kind of uh, restrictions or, 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 or standards or regulations. Um, if you ask economists, then then typically then uh, we would then recommend uh, more more likely some kind of um, market based instruments. And here are some kind of uh, examples. So I don't go through them in in a, in very much detail. You can read more of this kind of practical examples. But the most natural one would be this kind of uh, um, pollution tax. So impose some kind of tax on pollution which could be also is in the literature is often referred as Pigovian tax, uh, uh, referring to Cecil Pigot, who already took up this idea in, in 1920s. Of course, then in addition to taxes, there could be different types of charges, fees, uh, and, and so on. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, so, so the main idea with the market-based instrument is that, uh, that uh, uh, if this kind of uh, externality problem is is uh, causing too much uh, too much of of uh, of uh, pollution, then setting a price for the producer in the form of a tax or a fee or some kind of uh, monetary charge, then then will uh, will help the to find that uh, the, or, or decrease the amount of uh, pollution, making it more expensive for the for the polluter to to emit the pollution. Uh, in addition, then, then on this slide, I, I put a bit less common. Uh, in addition, of course, to the to the taxes, you might also have subsidies. For example, uh, um, subsidized abatement of the pollution. So that's the the other way of of uh, of uh, incentivizing the firms. Uh, then I will have a, a separate lesson on uh, marketable emissions permits. And then there are some some other other types of uh, deposit refund systems or non-compliance fees and uh, and and so on. So if we then think about what's the what's the difference between uh, the, between this command and control and market-based instruments, then actually uh, we can achieve similar kind of uh, effects with uh, or 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 incentives. Uh, uh, the, the very often with the with the market based instruments as with the with the command and control. So I took the same figure seven point two that was introduced in the context of the command and control measures, but now think about what could we do, for example, if we if we want to have some kind of input restrictions, uh, then instead of putting some kind of uh, quantity restriction, it's possible to put some kind of uh, uh, tax on harmful inputs. Think about, for example, the fuel tax or or some kind of carbon taxes that are, are nowadays uh, uh, nowadays uh, imposed. So so instead of restriction, for example, that uh, that that how much certain certain uh, polluting input uh, is allowed to use, it's possible to also impose a tax on that. So that would also give incentive for the producer to avoid this kind of uh, harmful. Uh, harmful um, input and also in that sense generate some tax revenue for the government. Uh, 
technology controls. It was this kind of uh, command and control that uh, measure that takes uh, directly targets to the uh, to the how this uh, this production is organized and what kind of technology is used. Uh, instead of imposing some kind of uh, restrictions, then there's also possibilities to, for example, subsidize uh, cleaner technology. There could be also also subsidizing the the um, uh, research and development uh, that uh, that would lead to this kind of cleaner technology. So one immediate example that comes to mind uh, in Finland and in many other countries, there was uh, um, subsidies of uh, wind power, uh, electricity production at the early stages. So there were so-called feed-in tariffs that would be be used as a subsidy for the for the for the wind turbine production of of electricity. Um, then if you go to the output side, if you think about the bad outputs, uh, so what's wh when this kind of emission permits or emissions licenses uh, move from command and control to the, to the market-based category, uh, the critical uh, dependent is that are these emissions rights or emission permits uh, tradable or not tradable? So we can have similar kind of uh, emissions permit system uh, as in the command and control. So obviously there's some kind of mechanism that these emissions permits are, are uh, allocated to the, to the producers. So there could be some kind of uh, auctioning or some kind of uh, uh, free distribution, which is called, known as grandfathering. But uh, the critical aspect is, can the firms then later um, buy and sell these permits between each other? So are these, are these emissions permits tradable or not tradable. So if they are not tradable, then, then we think about this emission permit system as command and control instrument. However, if this kind of uh, trade, if firms are allowed to trade uh, these emission permits between each other, this emissions trade, emissions market, make it a market-based instruments, even though in, in practice, this, uh, these permits are exactly same kind in both, both systems. So in that sense, uh, with the market-based instruments, uh, we can achieve uh, similar kind of effects as with the command and control, but because of this kind of possibility to trade and, and this kind of financial direct financial in, in incentives, uh, we believe that uh, it's more efficient to, to regulate this uh, pollution by, by uh, market-based instruments. There are, of course, some kind of... Um, uh, room for the for the command and control type instruments, for example, the zoning, which is which is perhaps more difficult to to achieve with the market market based instruments. But the, these are not kind of mutually exclusive. There can be like some elements of command and control and uh, and market based instruments. Like if you think about this uh, marketable emissions permits. Okay, that's all for this one. In the next uh, video lesson, I will then talk about uh, the optimal rate of uh, emissions tax. Thanks for your attention. See you in the next video.